Look at this. I finally received my very first Flex PCBs from PCBWay. Hey guys, a friend of mine came to me with this Phoenix Pro vaping equipment and it is always ending in an error message after boot. So if it's turned on by I think pressing it four times, it will try to heat the heating element here inside but after some time it will go into this error mode you can see here this error 20 then it will just simply turn off again and it does not heat up of course and that's where i looked into it and i tore it apart and saw that it uses this yeah flexi or flex pcb as a heating element i measured the yeah dimensions of it and designed a new one and ordered it and today it came in I will now try to install it and see what happens so the PCBs are meant to replace a so-called heating flex PCB you can see here and it's from a vaping device which uh, the name is Phoenix Pro and I already did solder on one of these new flex heating PCBs onto it and we'll turn it on in a moment. The problem by, uh, from this one here is that it is burned out. And maybe this PCB is really not meant to do heating. And I'm really not sure if these custom ones are as well meant to it. So I designed them online and yeah, ordered them from PCBWay. They shipped in about uh, eight days or so. I removed the stock one from the device, laid um, a glass panel on it to flatten it down as, as best as possible to then measure all the dimensions and such. I was not able to measure, measure the resistance, of course, as when it's burned out, yeah, there's not much to measure. And yeah, let's just turn it on for a very first test. Uh, whatever happens, happens. You have to press the button a few times and it will directly turn it on. And oh yeah, holy smoke. I mean, it does heat up, but that doesn't look very good. Okay, so I mean it detected the temperature, but it still has the error 20 of course Yeah, and sadly we have a burned out flex PCB so The next test I will do is now solder 2 in parallel on to see if it then reacts better and What I'm really not sure is how it measures the temperature so is it via the resistance of the flex PCB? If so, then there's a big problem on getting the correct resistance right. But it's nice to see the quality of the PCB. And it's really like intended, like designed and such. And yeah, if you ever need a flex PCB, check PCB way out. They are the sponsor of this video. And they offer PCBs in general, flex PCBs and CNC um, manufacturing, 3D printing by now, and also yeah PCBA, so they will assemble any PCB for you if you want. And let's check out now with two heating PCBs in parallel. Okay, so I connected two heating elements in parallel now. Let's turn it on again and if this all does not work still, as this is quite experimental for now, uh, another step would be to um, install everything like intended and put the heating elements around this aluminium core and put the insulation around it as well. So maybe then it will measure the temperature be better to yeah, not overpower the heating elements.
But for now, let's turn it on and hope for the best. So it's now turned on. And it looks like two heating elements drawing too much current. Let's see. Yeah, so it seems to have turned off now. And I guess it's because two, one, uh, two heating elements are drawing too much current and either some overprotection now has um, triggered or the battery is empty. Did go into a low volt protection mode or anything like that. I will just charge the battery now and see what happens. I have here a charging cable now and let's plug it in with the hope it will not burn everything down now. So it's plugged in, it's charging now. So it's somehow still working. And maybe we can even turn it on now. Okay, it doesn't look like. So I will disconnect the battery again. And we'll see if it boots. Yeah, it does boot. But the moment it tries to turn on the heating elements, it just turns off everything. Since I guess it's drawing too much current and uh, current in that moment. So I will dis uh, desolder one heating element again. And then I will yeah install everything as as it would originally be with the hope that the temperature is then controlled better so it's not over over burning like this one which does look even worse than the original one now. so i got one of these flex pcb heaters now installed in this aluminium thingy uh, it's very crude but the insulation is already yeah uh, glued around it and it will now either burn into flames again or it will yeah, hold the consistent temperature. And I hope for the best as otherwise this experiment is over then already as I will not yeah, make another uh, PCB as there is no real way for me to get the right yeah, resistance of this heating element. So let's turn it on. So it's now turned on and let's see if it burns in flames. Yeah, that already does not look so good. We can see it will try to go up to 200 degrees Celsius, but it's already just in flames. I'm really curious how it knows at which at what temperature it is. I mean the the heating <coughs> works very well it's just yeah smoking way too much and i guess it's now because this pcb is just not rated for 200 degrees it seems to be holding the temperature like intended and it smells a bit like the vape stuff inside so i i think it works just that the PCB is not temperature rated. You can see how it slowly degrades and yeah, just burns away. And I guess it's not so good to smell that. And yeah, from what I can see also is that the temperature is just way too high as everything here is melting in the moment. So maybe it's not that the PCB is not made for 200 degrees, but it's more like the temperature really here is something like 300 degrees. Since the resistance is not correct of the um, yeah, flex PCB, it measures a different temperature. And that's my best guess on it. So very great to have made this experiment and also to have ordered these first PCBs as it was just way simpler as thought. 
I will try to turn it off again. It was really just making a default PCB, like a standard PCB, and then just simply order a flex PCB in the end. And yeah, as it turns out, the quality as as wanted, just that my my project is not made for it. And PCB way is also clearly not rating these PCB for high temperatures, like here. If you have any ideas on how to get the correct resistance of such a flex PCB which is burned by measuring it or such, but I tried to get the exact dimensions as there, feel free to write it in the comments and yeah. Just a quick side note, I just noticed that when turning the device on without any PCB inside, you can see it still just yeah, runs the temperature up and it thinks it has the correct temperature. So my best guess is that it just doesn't have any temperature measurements and it will just simply put power into it via pulse width modulation. So it knows the correct um, yeah, specifications for this PCB, of course but not for my new ones, so it will just burn way too high. A way to get it working now would be to just calculate the correct values for this PCB, which I'm not capable of, um, and then just reflash the STM microcontroller in it with these new values, but that's way too much work to get it working in the end. Yeah, I just wanted to add this information to it so there's no real way to yeah no the only way would be to replicate this exact pcb though so it will only heat up to these 200 degrees and then it will most likely also work with these pcbs even if it has failed now it was a nice experiment to see how these flex pcbs turn out have a great day